Hi folks, this is Tom Herman with the Greening Fire Team. I'm back again. We've gone ahead and we've connected the batteries up here. You can see we've got uh, the positive straps here. The batteries connected together in parallel. And here's the negative straps over there. I've tightened these a bit tighter than hand tight, but not so much that you're stripping the threads out. There's, there's good connections here. Nothing's moving and that's the important part right there. Okay, if you look what we've done here, We've actually connected up the positive on this end over here, and you see we go to this end of the battery, and on the other side, this is where I've connected up the negative. So these are diagonal from each other. This is how you, you're supposed to connect up multiple batteries. If you connect them up this way, as opposed to connecting them up in the center, what happens is that each battery charges and discharges the same amount. So it's a, a balanced way of doing this. So if you put four batteries in here, Put that in the far corner and then put this in the far corner if you want put it in that far corner and this one in this far corner Just as long as they're opposed from each other. You're, you're doing well here Okay, we come off the positive terminal and here's the all-important safety fuse. This actually came with the Renogy kit This is a uh, 40 amp fuse. So we've got this just about right right now. I'm gonna back away from this I actually have this set up If you look we have your four panels right here, your four 100 watt panels. And they're actually connected together through a whole bunch of these uh, adapters here. These are actually two part adapters that go to one and then each one of these goes into another one. So what I've done is, if you look here on top, negative, 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 and there's a negative there. So this string here is negative and the other string is all the positives. So these are also hooked up in parallel, just like the way the batteries are. And these come back over here to the uh, Rover controller. Right now, it uh, looks like we've got about 13.2 uh, about volts, it says, on the battery. Let's go step through here. Uh, we've got 19.1 volts on the uh, solar panels themselves. Uh, dropping down about 18.7 right there and we're actually pulling 15.4 amps so that's what's coming from here to the controller and then that's uh, delivering power to the batteries and coming off of the battery we have uh, this connection over here and this is a uh, Victron Phoenix uh, 12 slash 500 inverter so it's a 12 volt 500 watt inverter and these are absolute brick outhouses here. Uh, these are probably the best inverters on the market. If we look, uh, the load we have here is one of my 1930s Methuselah soldering irons. Wow, this thing's 300 watts. I can actually feel this thing humming. Uh, that's how much power is going through it. It's pretty cool. Uh, and on here, we have the kilowatt. Uh, these are great. These are about... Uh, about $27 through Harbor Freight. And these are fantastic for, for monitoring uh, your power parameters here on the 110 volt side. If you look right now, uh, we're pulling about uh, almost 300 watts. I can change this, I can watch amps here. That's about 2.51 amps. Uh, we can check voltage and not bad with uh, this thing 60% loaded, we're at 119 volts, not bad. This thing's not really sagging at all. Uh, we can go to frequency. It's reading 60 cycles. So the inverter is doing good. And we go over here to accumulated kilowatt hours. So since I've turned this on, uh, the 300 watt iron has pulled up uh, uh, 60 watt hours or 0.06 kilowatt hours. So this is a really neat device. Everybody should buy one of these. I'll put this back down. We have a Bluetooth connected to this right now, and I can't show you, but I'll take a picture of it, and hopefully we'll get that posted as well. Uh, we can actually look at the parameters here on Bluetooth on a, a, an app here on the phone. The Victron will allow us to do the same thing here as well. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, we can check the battery voltage here as well. Uh, all of those ch uh, voltages there are approximate. But this one here, we can actually register a voltage and become much, much more confident in it. And 
yeah, 13.16. That's not bad at all. So it's a little bit of load there. If I go ahead and shut this off, we should see a huge spike in voltage now. This thing should start coming up more. Yeah, it's slowly coming up here, 13.24. So it's come up a tenth of a volt and it's gonna work its way up. This is charging nicely. And again, we're still putting 15.21 amps into the battery. I'll show you the backside of one of these panels here as well. The one thing I don't like about these is that they don't have any feet. And also the uh, cords on these are not very long, so you can't really put these up and angle them towards the sun. Uh, I'm working on a retrofit kit so we can actually put legs on the Renogy kits. I'm also working on kits so what we can do is we can lengthen these individual wires so that they're uh, much, much longer than this. Uh, with the longer wires we have here, I figure if I can lengthen these at least five or 10 feet per, uh, we can basically stand these up here in the sun and uh, capture much better sunlight. So they're laying on the ground here, uh, you're not getting the full uh, benefit of the sun, but with these angled towards the sun, so the sun's hitting them uh, more straight on, they'll, ge they're, they'll generate more power. Still, this is a good start. This is definitely better than nothing. These are nice kits. Uh, the one thing I did have to do is I did have to turn this on and go through the manual and select lithium iron phosphate battery. It'll charge somewhat on the lead acid uh, settings, but uh, they'll work much better on the lithium iron phosphate setting because the uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries run at a slightly higher voltage. And the higher voltage that they run on also means that uh, 12 volt equipment will work much, much better, more efficiently off of the lithium iron phosphates than they will off of lead acid batteries. Also, the neat thing about these is, uh, these we can pull down to literally 99% discharged and we still have 2,500 cycles of life on them. And if you pull them down to 80%, which is what is factory recommended, uh, you get about 3,500 cycles. Conversely, if you take a lead acid battery and run it down to only 50% depth of discharge with still 50% sitting in the battery, you get 500 cycles out of them. And there's uh, no difference between, uh, no comparison whatsoever. Uh, at 50% uh, depth of discharge, these do 5,500 cycles. So you got 5,500 cycles versus 500. Uh, this is why we're going with lithium, iron phosphate. That's basically it here, folks. Uh, I'll make some better videos as time goes on. And I appreciate you watching these. I, I hope you've learned something from them. I appreciate your feedback and your comments. Thank you very much.